wild iguana in my yard or across the way. A little shaky because I had to zoom it, otherwise you guys wouldn't be able to see it. And the alligator. And look at the yeah, down there, there's a little baby alligator as well. Right in my backyard, guys. This is Muscle Serpents Daily on the weekend, weekend edition. Let's go into the snake room and see what we got outside, evidently. We're teaming with wildlife. Alligators, wild iguanas, turtles, birds. It's all here. Now this is what I like to see when I come into my snake room. That is a lock I've been dreaming about. I don't know if you guys can figure out what they are. I'll give you a hint, they're both hurricanes and they're both hypos. They're both enchies. There's your hurricane pattern. I'm not gonna tell you anymore. There's a recessive in there too that they're both head for. And I'll be praying on this one. One of my most anticipated bull python clutches. So we could get super hurricanes. They're all gonna be hypos, because they're both hypo. And they could get super enchies. That alone would be great, right? Super enchie, super hurricane, which is also known as the Hayabusa. Thanks to Hans Winter. Interesting name, I like it. And Super Enchi would make it really nice too. And then something else, you never know. I like to see this when I walk into my snake room. All right, I came into my snake room. I saw that other lock I showed you before, which was a dream lock. This is my Burmese pythons. Hypogranite, double head, albino green. To Hypogranite doublehead albino green. I did it last year. We got some great babies. The cage is a disaster. <laughs> I don't know if you can truly see it. I don't want to disrupt them. It's really messy. So I was going to clean the cage. I was coming here to clean the cage, and then I see this. And they're not locked, because you can see the vent there of the boy. But they're pretty close, you know. They're in the right position. So probably not a good idea to go in there and start messing around with the cage and start cleaning them and disrupting them. So said this before, I know other people have said it before too. Sometimes messy cages <laughs> yield the best breeding behaviors because all the pheromones and from the urates and the urine in there, and they just they it turns them on, I guess. I don't know. So that that almost lock there is enough to tell me don't touch anything. Sometimes too many chefs with their hand in the pot mess up the uh, the final outcome, as they say. So I'm leaving them alone. You should too. Here is my biggest boa girl, and I gave her the year off last year. I'm gonna breed her this year, and I'm breeding her to this gorgeous little son of hers. This is a Russo red hypo, possible super hypo sterling, sterling being the patternless boa. She is a hypo Russo red pastel head sterling. So if this works out, which I haven't seen any locks whatsoever, we should see some 50%, you know, sterlings, possible super hypos, possible Russo red pastels, which is a line bread trait. All that red you see, that's that blood. That's not the blood red from the blood gene. That is Vin Russo breeding the reddest boas to the reddest boas to the reddest boas for 20 years. And then breeding one of those guys to a sterling, producing hats of which... This female is one of them, and she produced this little beautiful boy who we're trying to use this year to breed back and uh, really, really bring some more of those gorgeous reds. But look at that tail. I mean, that, that is a really nice looking solid bow. And there's, remember, there's no albino, there's no T positive, there's no nothing. There's just hypo, maybe super hypo in there, and a lot of line breeding involved. And she's been knocking over the water bowl every day, making a disaster of her cage. So I don't know if that's breeding behavior or she doesn't want she doesn't want him in here. I don't know what it means actually, to be honest with you. Uh, all I know is I gotta clean this cage and, and it's a top cage. She's the only bow I keep in an actual vision cage. All the other ones are in Freedom Breeder racks and this is six foot. So she actually has a lot of room in here and that's only because she's such a big, she actually picked the cage. I don't know if you guys remember, I showed you in a previous video. I was cleaning and she just kind of crawled up in here and I just kind of left her there ever since. Um, I don't need the cage yet. I will in the future when the berms start to get a little bigger and I have babies, but for now, 
we'll let her hang out now. She's checking out the phone. Come on, little girl, or big girl. We want you to breathe this year. Look at that beautiful mustache she's got. Wow. That's some good footage. She's showing up for the camera. Look at the black tongue. Nice looking steak. Look at that beautiful eye, that red eye from that Russo red. <laughs> There's a cover shot right there. Rise, Lord Vader, rise, rise. <laughs> Is this girl amazing? Super or hypo. Head sterling, Russo red. Look at the strength of that snake. That is a big snake and that is a very strong snake. She is just powerful. That she can reach up like that. I mean, you know what, that, that would, that's incredible to lift that weight, that height in a straight line like that. Man, I wish I was that strong. <laughs> she wants to try to climb on the light there. All right, hope you like the bonus footage. How gorgeous is this little girl? This is a caramel double head snow female that I'm raising up. She's got a messy cage. We're doing some cleaning right now, so I figured I'd show you a little video. She's gotten really big since I got her. Um, she's putting on some good size. Next, I'm saving her next year. Next year I'll breed her. I don't need to rush her. I want her to be next to her. She's got that mature looking head though, if you see. See her head really got very mature looking. Um, from what it was when I first got her. I mean, that's, that's how you know they're, they're kind of coming into the, their adulthood. And they get that really nice looking, beefy looking head. And she's just really nice. Obviously, the idea would be to make caramel snows, which I guess we would call moon glows here. In Australia, they would call hypo. <laughs> hypo snows, moon glows. We have the hypo gene here too, and I'm, I might start working with that also as well. But um, for now, this is what I'm going to try for next year. This little girl, she's looking really nice. I really like her. Hope she stays healthy. She eats well. You know, she's getting to that stage where I don't have to feed her every week anymore. You know, I, I feed her every other week, and she's just got some really nice pattern. She almost looks like a, she does, they, I mean, the caramel gene really does look pretty hypo-ish, I think. I mean, if you, if you were to compare this to a hypo ball python, I mean, that's a lot, that, that looks very similar, how, how, how much lighter it looks. It doesn't really look like a caramel albino to me, like we would see in a ball python. This looks like a hypo melanistic snake. So, that's, uh, that's the plan for this little girl. A little arrowhead on her head. Pretty cool. I just put these two together, and this is typical awesome breeding action here from this hypo labyrinth on top of a super raptor. I mean, within five minutes, he climbed on top of her. And she's obviously receptive, and he's going to breed her. So if you guys want to see what it looks like, <laughs> here it is. This is stereotypical behavior. This is what you want to see. <laughs> when you put your snakes together. You don't very, very rarely see it, okay? Especially immediately, but this is a good sign. Right here. Take a snapshot. Let me take a couple freeze frames of this one. Put it on Instagram. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this uh, weekend edition of Muscle Serpents Daily. And there's my Timur snake neck turtles that I got from Home crush field. They're getting big now. They're growing. They were little teeny quarter shape sized turtles. I got three of them. Look at that long neck. Timor snake neck turtles. They are awesome. They're they're very rare in terms of uh, captive bred ones. Crutchfield's one of the only ones breeding them I know, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. From what he told me. They got the crazy long necks. And they're doing really well here. It's nighttime in my garage here, which is where I keep all my turtles. And <laughs> they're doing really well. Hopefully you guys are having a great weekend. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notification, hit the like button, and we'll see you back along with the turtles tomorrow morning.